And then we understood that Krishna provides. That was the famous word. Krishna provides. That's why you really felt secure when you were with Prabhupada. Because you felt nothing could hurt you or touch you. And you felt wonderful. You always wanted to be around him because you felt fully protected. That feeling that everything's going to work out when you're with Prabhupada. Because everything did work out. The first dancing was in Tompkins Square Park, myself and Achutananda. Prabhupada introduced this uh, style of kirtan, which is very, very meditative. You know, when Prabhupada sang in the, in the park, that first time I danced, and uh, Chutananda got up and we, we danced. As I was dancing, I felt I should dance with the kirtan and I should dance as long as Prabhupada has the kirtan. Not that I should stop dancing and sit down. That would somehow be disrespectful to the Swamiji. So I danced for as long as Prabhupada had the kirtan. And Prabhupada had the kirtan for three hours. Non-stop, he was singing. And that's the way Prabhupada had it, very long kirtans and very meditative. I once asked Srila Prabhupada, what is the best way to sing kirtan? He replied that you sing in such a way that you never get tired. So that the kirtan should be able to go on endlessly. The New York Times, they came to that kirtan and they took a photograph of Achutananda and myself and Prabhupada sitting there. You see the back of Prabhupada's head and he's holding the bongo drum that he played. The caption was, the Swami's flock finds ecstasy in the park. Prabhupada said, the Times of New York was the most important newspaper in the world. This article, he said, marked the beginning of my movement. One night I was walking down 2nd Avenue and I heard the ching, 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 ching. And so I walked over and I followed the sound and it was the Krishna place and there was Prabhupada and they were chanting a mantra. And I had read that chanting mantras was the best kind of meditation. So I thought, well, maybe this is what I'm looking for. So I started to go in, but as I went in, I saw Prabhupada was shaking his head from side to side, like not to come in. So I stopped, but then I saw that he was just moving his head in time with the music. So I went in and sat down and started chanting. And then when Prabhupada spoke, he said, the supreme absolute truth is a person. And when he said that, I knew that I had found my spiritual master. Because I had been reading all these Buddhist books that say you cannot describe the truth. You, know, you cannot say it is. You cannot say it is not. You cannot say it both is and is not. You cannot say it neither is nor is not. And they never tell you what the truth is. So here's somebody who told me what the truth was, and it really made sense. So then I started coming regularly. At that time, there was lecture kirtan every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night. So anyway, after a while, I began to have a little doubt. I thought, well, I can see that the Swami is very honest. He's not cheating, but how do I know he really has knowledge? He could be a very honest man, but also be misled. And while I was thinking this, I didn't say anything to him, but I went to hear him lecture, and he said, I teach only what is in Scripture. So when he said that, then, then I thought, well, then there's no danger if he only teaches what's in Scripture. So that's how I started coming all the time. And then after a while, some of the guys started to do some kind of a service. And somebody would say, well, I'm doing this for the Swami. Or someone else would say, I'm doing that for the Swami. So I thought, well, I'd better get in on this because I thought he would maybe gather a few disciples and go off to a mountain cave somewhere and give them the secret teachings, you know. So I didn't want to miss out, so I went up to see Prabhupada and I said, is there something I can do for you? 
And he said, yes, you can take notes in class and type them up. So the next day I took notes, but I really didn't know what kind of format to write them up with, so I tried something. And I showed it to Prabhupada, and then Prabhupada showed me what he was working on, and it was the uh, essay, Who is Crazy? So then I knew that he wanted me to type the notes up in essay form. And Prabhupada said, and we will put, one day put all these essays together in a book and call it Practical Theology. I was cooking for Prabhupada. Then it occurred to me that it would be nice to start a Sunday feast program. I explained to Prabhupada that in this country, people usually gather in their families together on Sunday and have a meal together. So I thought it would be a nice thing to have a love feast on Sunday when we could ask all the hippies and others who wanted to come and have a Krishna conscious feast. Prabhupada said, oh, that is a good idea. And that's the beginning of the love feast. We used to have uh, the place packed every week. Every bit of prasad would be gobbled up. I cooked, Prabhupada cooked, Achutananda cooked. We handed out flyers. Uh, I remember the first flyer, stay high forever. No more coming down. Practice Krishna consciousness. How familiar these faces are. They are etched in my memory. And also I was very touched in part because I uh, am aware that this is important for the devotees. And being able to give the film to the movement is more of a gift to us that we had something of value that was appreciated. And that was very rewarding to us. So it's matchless gifts for us.